It's July 1, which means the fiscal year came to a close yesterday, and a new one begins today. Let's play a game in trying to predict the conference realignment moves that will be announced in between July 1, 2021 and June 30, 2022. With the impending 12-team college football playoff, I see that stabilizing FBS realignment for the time being. So I expect no moves at the FBS level as well as the A-10, Big East, and West Coast Conference. In total, I'm predicting eight conference realignment moves at the Division I level. My first prediction is that Virginia State leaves the CIAA where they've been a member for over a century and moves up to Division I in the MEAC. Virginia State's football stadium is adequate and they'd have the best basketball arena in the MEAC. VSU is within five and a half hours of all eight MEAC schools and the school just received a $30 million donation from Mackenzie Scott. Virginia State's budget would need some work, but that's not uncommon for a Division I move up. My second prediction is West Texas A&M will move up from Division II into the WAC. West Texas A&M had been a Division I member until 1986, and they opened a brand new 8,500-seat Buffalo Stadium in 2019 with luxury seating, which was recently named Division II's best football stadium. West Texas A&M's basketball arena is also relatively new, opening in 2002. West Texas A&M has solid community support for football, and their men's basketball program has really turned it up in the past five years or so. West Texas A&M would need some budget work, but they're pretty close as is. My third prediction is Austin P bolting the Ohio Valley for the A-Sun. Austin P has been an OVC member for six decades. I see the A-Sun targeting Austin P as A-Sun football has a bunch of schools in the states surrounding Tennessee, Central Arkansas, Eastern Kentucky, Kennesaw State, North Alabama, Jacksonville State. Austin P's athletic budget, with the exception of Belmont and Murray, is quite a bit ahead of a bunch of the OVC schools. And the governor's football budget is outgrowing the Ohio Valley, while their men's basketball budget outpaces everyone, with the exception of Belmont and Murray. So Austin P's resources are more in line with the schools who left the OVC, like Eastern Kentucky and Jacksonville State, or could end up leaving the OVC, as in Murray State and Belmont. So I see Austin P following the lead of Eastern Kentucky and Jacksonville State and heading south to the A-Sun. Additionally, I have the A-Sun adding West Florida for seven football schools and 14 full members. Pensacola is within driving distance of North Alabama, Jacksonville State, and Kennesaw State. The Pensacola metro area has 500,000 people with minimal sports competition, making it the perfect niche market for college sports. West Florida just launched football in 2016, and three years later, they won a Division II national championship. I'm making an assumption that UWF would want the same perception as UNF, UCF, and USF as a Division I school. West Florida's athletic budget is already higher than two ASUN schools. The football and men's basketball budgets would need to double to hit the ASUN 4, but that shouldn't be too much trouble given how healthy their overall athletic budget is. I have Western Illinois leaving the Summit League for the Ohio Valley. Western Illinois was a founding member of the AMPQ-8, which later became the Mid-Continent, which later became the Summit League, and they were a founding member in 1982. Moving to the OVC would reunite the Leathernecks with a rival Eastern Illinois since the Panthers left the Mid-Continent 25 years ago. WIU would gain an additional in-state school in the OVC with Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Western Illinois' athletic budget is $8.5 million below the summit median, and by moving to the OVC, they'd be just $1.65 million below the OVC median. And moreover, Western Illinois' $1.1 million men's basketball budget would go from $800,000 below the summit median to $200,000 below the OVC median. And there's four trips in the Summit League that are longer for Western Illinois than their furthest OVC trip. So moving to the OVC will be better for Western Illinois in terms of travel and competitiveness with their budget. I have the Ohio Valley calling up Southern Indiana from Division II. USI is located in Evansville, Indiana, right off the Ohio River. And the city of Evansville has been hosting the OVC tournament. USI opened the brand new Screaming Eagles Arena a couple years ago, and it has suites. The Screaming Eagles have been a successful Division II men's basketball program, and they offer what the OVC would be looking for in terms of competitiveness, facilities, and geography, and it also brings the OVC into a new state. USI, if they were to jump up, would need to boost their budget. And finally, the two biggest moves I see being made in conference realignment in 2021-2022. First, I have Belmont moving to the MVC. Belmont has always been rumored to really like their cozy geography of the OVC. 
but the dynamics are changing at the school. And with those shifting dynamics, I see Belmont's conference affiliation shifting as well. First off, Belmont's longtime president just retired. Their new president, who's coming from Duke, starts this year. And given that he's from Duke, I'm making the jump in assuming that he's going to want Belmont in the highest profile of a conference possible. More factors at play are that Belmont's enrollment has grown by about 44% since 2010, and their endowment has doubled in the past four years. Belmont is also opening a school of medicine in collaboration with HCA Healthcare. And with the school booming and its projected growth, it would make sense for Belmont to raise their profile and join five privates in the MVC. There's no other privates in the OVC and have direct access to Chicago and St. Louis in the Missouri Valley. With the exception of Murray, Belmont's men's basketball budget dwarfs the entire OVC. And overall, from budgets to endowment to enrollment to the overall growth of the school and to on-the-court success, Belmont just seems to be completely outgrowing the OVC and would be in its weight class in the MVC. And last, I have Murray State moving over with Belmont to the Missouri Valley. The Racers narrowly missed an MVC invite in 2017, finishing runner-up to Valparaiso. There are some people who believe that Murray State is a non-starter at the presidential level, but I don't buy that because if Murray State was a non-starter, then they wouldn't have been as close as they were to getting in in the first place. They would have been eliminated in the process much sooner. Murray State is a basketball-centric school who fits like a glove culturally in the MVC. The Racers have had three teams who've won in the NCAA tournament since 2010, a couple who finished in the AP Top 25 in the regular season since 2012. One of them was actually snubbed from the NCAA tournament. They bring thousands of fans to the Ohio Valley Tournament in Evansville, and now they can bring that racer caravan to St. Louis, where it's a three-and-a-half-hour drive from Murray, Kentucky. Their attendance would go from first in the OVC to third in the MVC. And like Belmont, their budgets for men's basketball would be eighth in the MVC, and for the athletic department, ninth in the MVC. So those are the eight Conference realignment moves I see being announced in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Murray State to the Missouri Valley, Belmont to the Missouri Valley, Austin P to the A-Sun, West Florida to the A-Sun, Western Illinois to the Ohio Valley, Southern Indiana to the Ohio Valley, West Texas A&M to the WAC, and Virginia State to the MEAC. Let me know your conference realignment predictions over the next 365 days in the comments below.